Have you ever felt like, I can't have real friends? Like it's not easy as it was when I was in grade school, forced to make friends with those in my class or in my neighborhood. No, now making adult friends is hard, let alone making real adult friends. And today we are talking with three women that get it. The pastor's wives tell all trio, and trust me when I say you are in for a good time. Let's do it. Here's the deal. On any given day, we think 50,000 to 80,000 thoughts. But get this, of those, let's say 50,000, 98% of them are the same ones from yesterday, which means we just keep thinking the same stuff over and over and over again, which is great if it's all true, all encouraging, lovely, praiseworthy, but with the father of the lies on the loose, out to steal your hope, kill your peace, and destroy your faith, my guess is they're not. I know you because I know me. Hi, I'm Heidi Lee Anderson, Christian author, cancer survivor, and social media content creator. And in every episode of the Trade a Lie for a Truth podcast, we're camping out on one thought and picking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to follow the voice of truth above all else. His name is Jesus. Because in his words, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. You ready? Let's seize the free abundant life in Christ one thought at a time starting with this episode. All right, y'all, you are in for a good time because we get to interview not just one, not just two, but three (laughs) incredible women of God. They are known as pastors, wives, tell all. Ladies, I'm so excited that you're here. Would you mind each introducing yourselves? Absolutely. My name is Jenna and yeah, (laughs) I'm I'm Jenna. (laughs) And I am Jessica. Less confused than Jenna. (laughs) And I'm Stephanie. And already you can tell that we are a giant train wreck, but we have fun (laughs) while wrecking. It's okay. (laughs) You ladies are so fun. And what I think is especially so fun is Each of you come from different denominations as well as pastors, wives of different types of pastors. Would you mind sharing which wife of what pastor you are? Like what role they have in the church? Okay. So I, my husband, Ian, um, he is actually not a, in a pastor role per se right now. He has been a youth pastor and he has also been a worship pastor since I met him, but he is the production director at our campus of the church that we attend. And he basically disciples his team. So he's, he's still a pastor at heart. So, okay. And uh, my husband, his name is Jonathan and he is the lead pastor at a local church here in Phoenix city. Love it. And my husband is a youth pastor at a different church than the two of them, (laughs) but we're all in the same like city. So And we live right, right around the corner from each other. It's kind of crazy. That's amazing. And we're going to dive more into how you guys met. But to kick off every episode, we play a game of two truths and a lie. I want you guys to give me three statements about you all collectively as a group. And I will do my best to guess which one is the lie. Are you ready? Okay. All right, let's go. All right, lay it okay. on. The first one is we all have matching tattoos. Whoa. <laughs> Second one is... Only two of us like to dance. Okay. And the third one is all of our birthdays fall in the same month. Okay. These are tough. You guys came with good ones because if y'all don't follow them on Instagram, I mean, their dancing reels are so much fun. And so I I would be shocked if that's the truth that I want to know who doesn't like to dance. For the sake of wanting to know, I'm going to just say that's the truth though. What was the first one again? That we all have matching tattoos. Oh, and you guys always pose so cute. I know Stephanie has that cute one right here when she poses. Okay, I'm going to guess, I hope you have matching tattoos, but is that the lie? No. No. (laughs) We all have the same one. (laughs) So the lie is the birthdays. Yes. Yes. Correct. You guys are too much fun. You guys need to tell more about how y'all became friends because friends that get matching tattoos together, I mean... That, you guys are in it deep. So would you mind one hundred percent about how you guys met? Yeah. So it's funny because I think my whole life I dreamed I could have somebody where I could go get a matching tattoo because you're stuck with me for life, friend. You stuck with me. <laughs> and I actually went through a time of just loneliness, which had a lot to do with me and some lies, I believed, yeah. and just um, some tricky church dynamics. But a few years ago, I felt the Lord calling me to serve women, but I didn't know what that looked like. 
And yeah. I knew that I wanted to bring the church together because I feel like I don't care what denomination you are. If we love Jesus and we are here to serve only him, I think the church as a whole needs to be together. And I knew mm -hmm. that God was laying that on my heart. And so I thought, well, you know, cause I'm a doer. And so I'm like, okay, well, he told me to do something. So I'm just going <laughs> to figure it out. So I was like, let's do a women's conference in the community, but it's not going to be my churches or my thing. I'm going to pull from all the different local churches and try to get women leaders in each of them to help make a team to put on this conference. And so I had someone come to me and like, do you know, Jessica Taylor? Cause you need her on her, on your team. And I was like, well, where is she? Bring her to me. <laughs> And yeah. I remember the, yeah. And I remember the first time we talked on the phone, it was like probably over an hour long. And I was just like, I fell in love with her. And I was like, <gasps> it's like a first date, you know? And I told my <laughs> husband, I was like, oh my gosh, I really want her to be my friend. <laughs> and so it kind of went from there. And then she and Jenna have actually known each other. They had been getting close probably for the past, like several years before that. They've known each other for a long time, but they just started doing a few things together. Like let's go get coffee or let's do this. And they slowly realized that they're both just as weird as each other. And it just somehow worked and they could be their true selves with each other. And then I came in and she introduced me to Jenna too. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, like I've always been a little too much for people and a little bit too silly or loud or like, okay, calm down, please. Like people would be embarrassed. And the two of them just shake their heads and laugh and they act just as silly and stupid half the time. And so we had that connection. The connection is stupid. <laughs> we did. Stupid and weird. It's fine. We're just different. It's okay. So we laughed a lot together. And I remember thinking, okay, and I felt the Lord play something else in my heart. All of us were in ministry. All of us had been wounded. Mm -hmm. All of us also have felt like we didn't quite fit the mold of what someone in ministry should look like or a pastor's wife should look like. And through that connection, I think I randomly brought it up to one of them. And I said, what if we did like a podcast? Just, I don't know about how like the very worst preacher's wife, we could call it that. And just talk about like the hard things and the good things and like all of that. And both of them were like, oh my gosh, yes, mm -hmm. let's do it. And I think Jessica was the one that was like, no, 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 I got the title. I got the title. It's pastor's wives tell all. And I was like, oh my gosh, it is. That's it. And <laughs> we had no idea what God would do with that. And the funny thing is COVID happened. I mean, COVID is not funny, but COVID ironically, COVID happened and the women's conference never took place and it never <laughs> came to be. But this came out of it. And mm -hmm. both me and Jessica are fully, fully believe that the Lord placed that on my mind yeah. just to bring her mm -hmm. to me mm -hmm. and that God put us together. And this friendship has been the most healthy friendship I think I've ever had. So I, I don't know. I'm just like amazed at what God has done through this friendship. Yeah. I love that. I love hearing how you guys met. That is such a cool story. And I think a lot of us women, I mean, we, <laughs> we struggle with that lie of like, I yeah. can't have real friends. I mean, it was easy in school to make friends, right? Whoever was sitting next to us in class or we're sitting across from them at the lunch table, it's either talk to them or stare at our lunch. So it was easy to make friends. Yeah. But now as adults, it's like, how in the world do I do that? Stephanie, you share how you started to feel that like, I, I'm too much for people and I yep. don't have that close friendship that I want. Did the uh, Jessica and you guys, did you guys feel that as well? Where you felt this lie? Like I can't have real friends, maybe because of your personality or in the position you're in, in the church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say um, when I, you know, my husband and I started into youth ministry right out of us getting married and getting out of college. So we've been in ministry for almost 21 years now. And so for me, I was just kind of going off of what I have seen from other pastor's wives and what I have heard. And so for me, for a lot of that time, I just believed that I couldn't get close to a lot of people because if I did, then they would, um, you know, maybe find out things, even though we had no secrets, but, you know, just sins and things like that, that maybe the whole church didn't need to know because um, of course we have that mentality of like how it was in high school. Mm -hmm. If someone yeah. knew, then they might gossip and think that my husband's not good enough yeah. or whatever to be preaching. And so, yeah, I think I definitely, in my, especially in my twenties, I think we're still just trying to learn ourselves in our twenties. Twenties are lovely, but um, it's a but lot of learning. So it's a lot of, a <laughs> lot of learning in the twenties. So yeah. uh, I think a lot of times I just believe that I really couldn't have close relationships. I could have good friends, but not like super inner circle close where they knew everything about me. 
Yeah. And for me, I mean, just growing up in church, I just remember feeling like, you know, things had to be swept under the rug. Like we just don't talk about hard things, you know, everything's fine all the time. And so I think that I was very guarded, um, just in general, as I went into ministry with my husband. That's a good word. Guarded. Guarded. Yeah. And that's probably a problem. (laughs) A lot of women face, not just like us because we're in the ministry, but that's Mm -hmm. just in general. Yeah, we right. tend to put on a mask of what we want people to see and we don't actually like reveal what's on the inside. And I used to do that and I made it real spiritual. I would say like, well, I don't, what if I accidentally gossip or I accidentally whatever. So like, I just didn't share the hard things. Yeah. And then that put up a guard. It put yeah. up a wall and people really couldn't get through it. And then all they saw was this like super ha 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 girl. Yeah. And I that was too much. But then they didn't really know the real me. So they didn't even know how to see me. I didn't let them see me, if that makes sense. No, I hear you. I hear you. And I I mean, I understand when I moved um, to where we are now, and it wasn't a church I was familiar with, people I was familiar with. I mean, it took a long time to start. We've been going there for almost 10 years. And me and my husband just looked at each other the other day, like, we are finally making good friends, like real friends, not just acquaintances like, Hey, good to see you. And man, that can be hard when you're an adult, when you're a mom, when you want someone to talk to, I mean, we're made for community. So let's talk about that. Let's look at what the, the Bible has to say, what God has to say on friendships. And I would love to hear from you guys, what verse or maybe Bible story stands out to you to help shed some light on, on friendship. Well, I mean, let's just look at Jesus. Okay. Like, yes, he was friendly to everyone. He spoke to everyone, but he had his group of people. He had the disciples that he did life with. And I think that can be a big misunderstanding when people are in ministry. They feel like they have to be all things to all people. And, you know, that's just, it's not true. Like you need a tight knit group of people who you can really dig in deep with and who can hold you accountable and talk about the hard things with. Of course, you don't need to, you know, air all of your stuff to everybody, but you do need people who you can go to and have these conversations with these really hard conversations with. And the accountability is huge too. Like you need that. So, I mean, Jesus had his small group of people. And I think that that Shows well, he, us that we need that too. He even had his inner circle yeah, within yeah. the disciples. Right. Yes. And so I yeah. think that's, he's just showing us, like yeah. Jenna said, the perfect example of how you have your inner circle mm-hmm. and then you have a group out here and then you have the people that you're serving, yeah. that you're loving, that you do get to, you know, yeah. do life with sometimes. Yeah. But we definitely, like Jenna said, cannot be right. the same for all people. Right. And we're not created to be. We would be, yeah. I mean, I think we try to, we try to be super women and have yeah. all these besties and all this kind of stuff, but that's not really biblical because it says like, you'll be blessed if you just have one true friend, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. that iron sharpens iron, you know, friends, they come out of adversity. I know for me, um, some of the worst pain and hurt in my life, I gained this one first and then I gained this one. And, you know, you just don't ever know if that pain and hurt didn't happen and loneliness, would I still, would I be here with them right now? So I think that we have to sometimes go through the fire and be refined and, and weed out what should not be there any longer. And then God has something beautiful on the other side for you. And I'm even thinking, I know some people are going, well, okay, Jesus didn't need friends. I mean, we could say that, but he believed in community mm-hmm. yeah. and he walked alongside people. And I mean, the s- disciples themselves, I mean, sometimes a couple of them are going like, this is my best friend. Yes. <laughs> and then I also think about the hard part. So people are very guarded because like, oh my gosh, like what if someone hurts me? Well, Jesus didn't just say, what if someone hurts me? I know someone's going to hurt me. Mm-hmm. A few people in this group, one in particular is going to completely betray me but I'm choosing friendship anyway, and I'm choosing community anyway. And why do we think we're above that if Jesus wasn't? Right. That's a good point. I was thinking too of, of Jonathan and David. And here mm-hmm. it's like, mm-hmm. man, David is going to take the spot that Jonathan by right should have had as being Saul's son. But I love, I mean, I want to read a couple of verses from first Samuel because we read in 18, three, Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own. And then 19 verse one, Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And then later, 24, 
said, whatever you say, I will do for you. Jonathan said to David. And what I love that you point out, and Jesus showed this with his friends, Jonathan shows us with David, but that friendships are not all about us. You know, yeah. it's not centered around us, but we actually see it's, it's revolving around service, like mm-hmm. loving others. And I would love to maybe hear more from your guys' perspective. Like friendships can be messy like that, right? Because we yeah. all are human and we all are messy. But what have you done to form solid community, maybe amidst the mess that can help us as we're trying to forge those same friendships? Yeah, I would say the first thing, um, and we've shared this at retreats and stuff like that, until I started to allow the Lord to change my eyes toward women in general, because um, I, I say a lot that I think that we as women come into our 20s and 30s and 40s with a high school mentality to look for people that look like us that have the same um, likes and dislikes and go to the same shopping places and ages and all of that. And I think that we have to really throw that away. And I think that's one of the biggest things that stops people because we are still in that high school mentality. So for me, when God started to transform my life and friendships, especially within the church, I started to look for people that were older than me, especially, and, uh, and then some that are younger. And just to ask them out for coffee, start to care and start to ask how they're doing. I think one thing that stops people from friendship, friendships, <laughs> is we're so professional, French fries, you know, whatever. We could have a friendship date over French fries. Any there you day. Go. One of the things is that we are not good at asking questions. Mm-hmm. People are not good at asking questions. Here's the reason, because they really don't care. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, they want you to ask questions about them. They care more about themselves and getting themselves to you than really truly knowing about you. Mm-hmm. And so the friendship, that bond never happens. And so I really believe, and I've seen this in my family, I've seen this in just in church in general, is we have to get better at asking questions and teaching our children how to ask yeah. questions and care about what's going on in other people's lives yeah. and stop yeah. thinking that the world revolves around ourselves. And that is hard to do is to ask questions, especially if you didn't grow up learning how to do that, or you didn't have a parent that asked questions. Mm -hmm. But when you start to ask people questions and get to know them, then walls will break. You'll find out that you actually have things in common with someone that's in their 60s and you're in the 30s, or you're in your 20s and they're in their 70s. But I think that my world was open so much when I started to really look at every woman and want to build relationships with them and allow God to either bring that woman closer or keep them at a distance because we do need to have discernment and know that not every woman has um, best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. And that's between them and Jesus. But also, I would say, be yourself. I think that this is what's so important about the friendship to my right and to my left is that we are completely ourselves. And I think that helped us to be able to be completely ourselves to the world. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we could have done this seven years ago Mm -hmm. without Mm -hmm. these friendships first. I think God was still molding and shaping us to go Mm -hmm. like, it's okay to be dumb. It's okay to be stupid. It's okay to dance (laughs) and maybe not be great at it because Jesus is going to use it. And he loves our craziness, but he also loves those that are not crazy. If you're not and you are prim and proper, then there is a place for you too. But don't judge us crazy humans. We got friends that are prim and proper. Yes, and we love them. And so just break down the walls and stop being judgy and love people for who they are. Be yourself. And I think that's what's brought the freedom that we have in this Mm -hmm. friendship right here. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say be a person that asks questions because my husband, he's one of those, he tells me he has about two to five questions rolling in the back of his mind whenever he goes to talk to someone because he really wants to take the conversation further. But what's so interesting is when he's come back, I'll be like, did they ask you anything? Did they ask you? No, no. Oh, okay. And it's interesting. It's kind of crazy how people love to talk about themselves, but they don't have the time of day to get to know someone else. I really think, honestly, all it takes sometimes is just asking one question and that opens up the floodgates for them. But let's, let's reciprocate that, right? If someone asks you a question, let's get to know one another too, and kind of bounce that back. So I love that you called that out. 
If you're exhausted, heavy burden, running yourself into the ground, if you are hustling, running 24 seven, you're invited. My sister and I are leading a one month Bible study through the month of April and you are invited, girlfriend. It's a Monday through Friday group with not only daily reading, daily questions, a daily breakdown of what it all means, but there is a community group with over 300 women, Christian women who chat and pray together on the weekly. We just opened the doors now, so grab your seat and get ready to study rest. Anyone else really need this? What does the Bible say about rest and how can we practically seize it, build the rhythm of it, live it in our actual lives? Let's find out together. All the info at www.heidileandersonministries.com. I also want to talk about one thing that you said that I think is so interesting about church friendships and being multi-generational. It's funny because there's mm -hmm. a study that came out recently that talked about how people in churches have more multi-generational friendships than any other type of person. And when we know the church, we know, well, of course that should be, right? Because mm -hmm. we are the yeah. church body right. and we will link arms under the banner of Christ, no matter how old we are, how young we are, where we are in our lives. And I want to talk about that a little bit more. I wanted to share a story of mine first is when I first started going to our church that we're at and I was praying for church friends. And in my mind, like you said, I was picturing someone like me. I was picturing someone in their mid thirties, some kids. That's who I was hoping I'd connect with. Well, we joined the Sunday school group, the small group, and turns out we were one of the very few that were in our thirties. But I have some good friends that came out of that group that are my mom's age. They're in their 60s. We've gone for walks once a month. We text each other. And it's fun how, man, when I asked for friends, the Lord gave me friends, but it wasn't what I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. And I'd love for you guys to share maybe a personal story. Or where have you seen the beauty of the body in your churches as well, no matter where the ages are? Yeah. For me, oh my goodness, I led a creative small group last semester um, at my church and it was just going to be, you know, we're all going to get together. We're going to talk about creativity, whether, you know, you were into photography or because I do photography at my church. I expected a lot of young people to join this group. Well, we had this one older lady, her name is Miss Rhonda, and she is the most precious lady I have ever met. And she showed up and I was in my head, I'll be real honest. I was thinking, why is she at the creative small group? Like I'm confused, but oh my goodness, she lost her husband a couple of years ago and her heart is to help other widows go through their homes and not completely change their home, but make yeah. their home not feel like it's a shrine to their husband, basically. So they don't feel this like heaviness all the mm -hmm. time. And she started talking me through it and it's so creative. And I was like, oh my goodness, you have just as much of a place here as any of us do. And yeah. through that small group, I gained a new friend in Miss Rhonda and she texts me and, sh and we'll text each other sometimes just send encouragement. It really taught me something because I typically wouldn't like you. I was, I was expecting friends my age and I did have that, but I love that this was totally out of left field and it's been yeah. the most precious relationship. You said Miss Rhonda, right? Yeah. Cause I had a Miss Rhonda, <laughs> not just her. I had a couple ladies a few years ago back when I was real lonely and was struggling with people in my age group and feeling like I wasn't being fully myself and it was really hard, but I had these couple of older ladies that I really would talk to about anything and everything and feel like they were hearing me and seeing me and they were fun. Miss Rhonda, she was real fun. Like she's <laughs> hilarious. And I just remember thinking like, wow, I feel more comfortable around these ladies than I do anybody else. Mm -hmm. And then even at my church now, there's a couple of ladies that are older that I will text or sometimes and like talk with about some of the things that are going on that are super excited about our podcast and are always talking about our silly dances. I don't know, like these friendships are some of the sweetest. Yeah. And it's just like, they've been there and they get it and they're not pretending pretending like they have it all together. And I think that's the thing is even the older generation has been taught. We don't talk about some things, but these mm -hmm. ladies will even say that they're trying to fight against that. We need each other well, and we need to talk about the things. I think that that's the beautiful thing about it. When there's a friend group and there are multiple ages in that group is, you know, you've got the older people who have been through a whole lot more life than the younger people. And they are able to give you so much more wisdom because they've been through it. They've had experience and, you know, the Lord's given them wisdom through 
all of it. And they get the same thing from us from a different level, you know, not saying that we're young. I mean, we're getting, we're getting up there, you know, but there are people younger than us. It's fine guys. We're all getting older. I know Ty turns 40 this summer. It's like, Ooh, that that's going to hit hard. That one's Mm going to hit. My husband turns 40 this summer too. So does mine. Well, fall, but yes, this year. There we go. It's fine fine, guys. I'm 41, but it's cool. But you don't look it. It's all good, girl. We're young. 40 is the right. Yes. 40 is the yes. All right. And here's what I want to hear from you guys too, because you guys seem like you just have such a fun bond, a very special relationship, but it can't be perfect, right? There are times maybe where you butt yeah. heads, maybe it's a little messy and especially working together and writing a book. Goodness gracious. There have had to be times where maybe you didn't see eye to eye, but still pushing through the mess and the hard is worth it, right? With real friends. Can you maybe speak to that a little bit more, either share a story of what makes you so passionate about being friends with one another like this? I'll go. (laughs) They both looked at me. So, um, yeah, I'm sure. Well, we do. We, we have had, you know, times where we disagreed, but the thing is we communicate about that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't sit there and pretend anymore. Like probably at the beginning of the friendship, I would be like, I don't want to lose them. So I'm not going to say anything. But now I understand there's security in bringing things to the light. That's what Jessica has always said. Bring yeah. things to the light. Talk it out. And so if something bothers me, I will say it. We'll talk through it. There have been times Jenna has looked at me or Jessica's looked at me and said, hey, let's talk about what you just said. Or let's think about that and let's discuss it. And it may feel uncomfortable. It felt maybe uncomfortable in the beginning. It doesn't anymore. Now it's like, oh gosh, let's work through this. I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm so sorry. And I think the biggest thing too is not just getting offended when somebody points something out to be able to like receive it yeah. and say, yeah. they good. might be right. I might yeah. be wrong. And right. let me, let me sit there. Let's talk through this or, oh gosh, yeah. I did not mean for it to sound like that. I think a lot of things are misunderstandings and yes. many friendships have a misunderstanding and someone is just like, well, I'm just going to let that go, but you're not letting it go. You're holding on to it and it's breaking the friendship up when you should have just said it and brought mm-hmm. it to the light in kindness. Let's mm-hmm. talk about that because I do yeah. agree where sometimes a lot of things can be mere misunderstandings, either through yeah. a tone or a poor word choice, whatever it may be. And sometimes just talking about it kind of relieves that it clears stuff up. So I love that you pointed that out and that you guys are real. I mean, that's a good thing, right? When you're communicating, when you know that it's someone that loves you, they're not saying it to condemn you or tear you down. Yeah, no, they right. love you right? They want the relationship to be good. And we can just remember that when we go into those conversations. Absolutely. All right. And so, okay. To wrap up this conversation for someone who may feel lonely today, that doesn't have what you three have, but desperately wants it. Like what advice or encouragement would you give them? I would say, do not underestimate the power of praying for friends. Because I do think that 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 is powerful and that the Lord will put people in front of you. Now, for those who are especially introverted, you do have to take the first step. You can't just sit at home and just expect a friend to come knock on your door. Because (laughs) although that would be great, it's not going to happen that way. It might, you know, for some people. But you've got to take the first step and you've got to ask somebody for coffee. Like if you want to have friends, you've got to take initiative. But I think praying is a is a good first place to start. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, because I, I feel like, you know, even before Stephanie knew us, she was praying us into her life, mm-hmm. you know, through Jesus, of course. She talks a lot about on other podcasts where she went through a lot of friendship hurt. Mm-hmm. And so she was on her knees praying and crying out to the Lord. And he didn't bring us not right away, right, right away. It was mm-hmm. years later, right? Yeah. Like a couple of years yeah, later. I journaled and prayed mm-hmm. and cried for years. So I think yeah. that like we have to, you know, and I'll let Stephanie kind of talk to that a little bit more, but I think what Jenna said is right on because I mean, we do talk with people and just was talking with someone the other day. Like I have prayed, mm-hmm. I have prayed mm-hmm. for years. I still have nothing. What yeah. do I do? You know? And so it, that's hard. That's hard when you, when they are doing what they're supposed to be doing, they are reaching out. I would say if we're talking like within the church right now, a challenge for the church is to ask your pastor wife or ministry leader out. Don't expect that they are going to do that. Like you make the first move because what you think is they're too busy 
and I don't want to add something else to their plate. But what they're doing is going home lonely because everybody thinks that. And so no one asks. Yeah. And so they you think, have a She's just counseling all these right. people and whatever. And she's going, I'm dying. Yeah. And so yeah. The, there's so many pastor wives and ministry leaders that feel completely alone because no one really wants to get to know them. They just want to meet with them so they can get something from them. And so I think like if we can really, what you were talking about earlier, Heidi, is just that, that serve, that serve mentality of how can I serve? I think if we go into friendships like that, how can I serve and think about the person that's sitting in front of me and stop thinking about myself? I think there's going to be some beautiful friendships and a lot of pastor wives and ministry leaders that are going to feel less alone. And a lot of the church body that's going to go, oh, they really are just like us. I think it's going to be a beautiful, you know, collision when people start to communicate and ask and step out of their box and do something that might feel uncomfortable, yeah. but will have a lasting effect on ministry leaders and themselves. And I'll say this, it, it's for a season. Loneliness is for a season. And I think we go through lots of seasons in life. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that season is to teach you something. But if all we can do is just focus on that and we're not focusing on what God is wanting to teach us through that season of loneliness, we might miss something. And I think for me, I spent many years crying, many years of going, I don't actually feel really seen. I, I feel misunderstood. I feel as though I keep doing things wrong. And sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing wrong. And when I've tried to reach out to ask like, hey, can we make this right? Because something's off. And I maybe I think I've done something to hurt you. Can you let me know what it is? And then they brush it off and pretend everything's fine, but then go and gossip. Like there's things like that that have happened over and over again. And I got to the point where I was like, okay, Lord. I have to lean into you right now because I have nowhere else to go. And let me just say, God has used that season of loneliness in ways I never would have thought possible right now. Yeah. Women who reach out to us and I'm like, oh, I got this. Let me talk yes. to them. Yes. And it's a season. It is a season. And we have to know there are times to cry. There are times to weep. There are times to have joy. And this is just a season. Yeah. It is good to call out because I think sometimes where we are today, we can get stuck in it and we don't have that long-term perspective that everything is just a season here on earth. And I'll always remember my aunt. She has these amazing friendships where these women, they go on vacation together and they do everything together. And I remember asking her a few years ago, like, how in the world did you get that? And you know what she said to me? That was such an encouragement. She said, you know what, Heidi, I didn't have these women when I was your age. I didn't have these women when my kids were teenagers. I actually just met them like five years ago. And so I think sometimes we can think like, okay, people have their childhood best friends that they've had forever and we don't have that. So we're never going to have that. And what she reminded me is just because I don't have it today doesn't mean the Lord isn't orchestrating that in the future. Right. So I love Stephanie that like your story, like you said that it's only a season. So keep hanging on. And mm -hmm. I, one thing that I'd like to say too, as we combat this lie that I can't have real friends, not only do you now hear that, of course you can, that God has given us the body, one another to link arms with. He is for community. He wants us to be living life together. But I love the truth in John 15, 13, where Jesus says, greater love has no one than this, that someone laid down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did for us. That's who he is to us. He called us his friends. So even when you don't feel like you have friends, even when you are feeling lonely, yeah. I hope you know that in, in spite of those feelings, the truth is Jesus is here. Jesus yeah. is your friend. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And he has laid down his life for you. So he has some yeah. good things in store for what's ahead too. So thank Absolutely. you so much, ladies, for, for sharing this truth with us, helping us trade the lie for the truth. Um, at this point, I mean, we all want to be best friends with y'all. We want to join <laughs> your circle, make that trade all for it. Let's do it. But how can we connect with you more? Can you share more about your book that's being released too? We want to hear about all of it. All right. So first of all, just go get a matching tattoo with us, Heidi, and you're part of the group. Just come on. Let's do it. Come to the South. But yes, our book that's going to be released on April 30th, our book is called Pastors, Wives, Tell All, Navigating Real Church Life with Honesty and Humor. And yes, we are three pastors' wives writing this book together, but we are looking behind the scenes at church and it is 
good for everyone in the church to read, really. Yeah. Yes, there's going to be encouragement for ministry leaders, especially. But if you are not a ministry leader, we are still talking to you. Yeah. And constantly we say, church, hey, church. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it is for all of us to be able to come together and have a healthier place to meet and to break down the church hurt and some of the walls that we've put up and really dive into it. And you can find us and the book and all the things on our website at pastorswivestellall.com. We are also love to be on Instagram and TikTok. And we are also on Facebook at Pastors Wives Tell All. So come find us and be our friend and message us because we will respond. <laughs> yes. We didn't even mention y'all have a podcast that is epic. Oh. What? Oh yeah. So we therefore do. we do. Therefore we do. And therefore. I don't know where I went with that. We have a podcast and it's literally called Pastors Wives Tell All. And you will see the three of us crazies on the cover covering our mouths. Yes. So, so yes. And we oh talk about all those church things and beyond. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So, much. so if you haven't ordered a copy of the book, now is the time. Trust me when I say you will not regret it. Okay, women, before you leave, before we end this conversation, how we end every podcast is just a quick lightning round of five questions. Just give you your knee-jerk reaction. Okay. No holds barred. Okay. Are you ready okay. for this? We don't question, know if we are. Question, <laughs> question but number we're here. One. I, have, I have faith in you. Question number one. Who should get paid the most? Worship leader, youth pastor, or senior pastor? <laughs> but, I mean, I I, the, uh, I would say the lead pastor because I, I now know what goes into that. But I really think that the, the worship and the youth yeah. should be right up there. And they should be, both be paid equal. I think I, everyone know, should make a lot of money. Oh, you know I had to throw that in there. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, thanks, girl. I want to know who's going to speak up first and say my husband. My husband. <laughs> yeah. it, that is so hard though. For it is. Yeah, it it is. Is. That's a complicated question. Number two is much easier. Okay. Which volunteer job at church do you think is most underappreciated? Maybe kitchen. Yeah. Right? Or people cleaning behind okay. the scenes. And I was going to say children workers. Oh, oh. They, yeah. They really are. I mean, yeah. I mean, we appreciate them a whole lot at our church, but I would say as a whole, I would say children, oh, children's workers. Good. Yeah. Good. As a one. former kids ministry, I agree with you. Number three, which volunteer job at church would you want to do last? Children's ministry. Children's worship, worship team. Huh. Worship team. Okay. And, and legit anything in the kitchen. I think that's why I mentioned that. I just don't put me in the kitchen. I you don't want me cooking anything for you. You don't want me doing any of that. You can make your tomato soup. That, that is me. I'm with you in the kitchen. Okay, <laughs> last question. If you could say one thing as a pastor's wife to the rest of us, the church body, what would you want us to know? Mm. We are just like you. We struggle with the same things. Don't put us up on a pedestal that we don't need to be on. I mean, obviously, there's a whole conversation around that, but yep. legitimately, we have the same struggles. We're just like you. You need to know yeah. that. Okay. And before Did we it. pray, that is so true. Before we pray, I do want to say this, especially for you guys and for any ministry leader, pastor's wives that are listening for the church. I want you to hear Hebrews 13, 17. It says, have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Do this so that their work will be a joy, not mm-hmm. a burden. For that would be of no benefit to you. And then lastly, mm-hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. And what I want to say is, man, you guys give your whole lives to us as the church. And that is such a gift. And you see it. A lot of things. You hear a lot of things. You experience a lot of things for the good and the bad. But what I want to say is thank you so much for doing what you do and for anyone who is on the brink of wanting to give up because it is too hard. Even church in general, you want to leave. Don't you dare give up because we need you. God is in it. And even when it is so messy, let's love each other so that it's a joy to serve the Lord, right? Let's Mm -hmm. not burden one another. Let's lift one another up because Mm -hmm. man, this world needs Jesus and we need each and every one of us to share the good news that he brings. So thank you for each and every one of you, what you do. I'm so grateful for it. I know your church body specifically are so grateful. Would one of you guys mind closing for us in prayer to end our time together? Sure. 
can go ahead and do that. God, I thank you so much for Heidi. I thank you for what she's doing and the joy that she brings to this podcast and to her Instagram page and everywhere we get to see her smiling face. I thank you for the church body, all of us believers that you are with us, that you love us, that you see us and everything we go through. I pray right now for the person who's listening, who's lonely. I pray that you would help her to really feel your presence, but to also know that this is just a season and that you have such good things planned for her and that you're going to take every single ugly circumstance, every hard thing, and you're going to make it good. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.